Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to go ahead and review the Edge browser by Microsoft. So this is the browser that defaults in Windows 10. It's kind of the evolution of Internet Explorer back from the previous decade, and they've made a new browser that they claim to be faster. Um, and it definitely seems to be simplified in a lot of aspects, which is good for new users. And what I mean by that is that if you go and do things like right-click on your page, where in other browsers you would have a big list of things that you can do, in Edge they've tried to condense it down to just a few critical items. Likewise, in areas like the settings menu or over here in the hub, there are actually very few buttons that you need to know about and to click on in order to make things work inside of the Edge browser. In addition to that, as a Windows user, you are prompted when you install Windows to set up a Microsoft account or to log into one directly. And one of the reasons is so that your Microsoft account can be used across all the different Microsoft apps. So one of those is, of course, the Edge browser. So rather than having to register a different account in a, in a browser like Opera, Chrome, or Firefox, and to log into that manually, um, on top of logging into Windows. When you log into Windows, you've already got your Mail account right here, or at least your Microsoft account, where this is going to synchronize your data between the browser as you switch around between computers or devices. One thing I find myself doing in other browsers quite often is actually having multiple browsers open. I'm kind of a tab addict. I, I will open many different windows inside of my browser, and sometimes I'll open multiple browsers. So one cool feature over here on the top left is the ability to put tabs aside. So I think in the Edge browser, there's not really a need to open up a completely different browser if you have too many tabs because you can put the tabs aside and reopen them later on. So really by doing that, you only ever need to have one instance of the browser open. Now that may not even apply uh, as an important thing for most users simply because most people probably have two or three tabs um, But if you are a tab addict, I think that's going to be a useful feature for you One thing I absolutely hate about the edge browser is that when you look at the new tab page or the start page by default They try to throw a lot of stuff at you So you have the top sites up here, which is probably what you're used to in most new tab pages for different browsers where you can pin the most important sites that you want to always show up there. But then in addition to that, they have all of this new stuff powered by MSN, um, weather information, sports games, uh, what's happening with the stock market, all of this different information, which in my opinion is just way too much. And yes, it's possible to turn it off if you go into the settings menu, which is good. Um, for users like me, I probably would turn that off. But I have to wonder how many average users are really going to think to go into that menu to turn things off versus how many are just going to be stuck looking at this kind of thing forever where every time they open up a new tab page, it's going to be trying to throw news articles at them. And I get that uh, they kind of want to cross promote themselves with the MSN network there, but I do find it annoying as a feature out of the box. Yes, some people are going to want that, but not so much for me. In addition to pushing the MSN news articles, they are also trying to push the Bing uh, web search engine, which is not to be unexpected because of course Bing is developed by Microsoft. so. By default, you use Bing in the browser. Now, I changed it to DuckDuckGo, and how you actually change your default search engine is you have to use that search engine once, and then you go up to the settings menu, but it's not just the settings menu. You have to go to advanced settings for whatever reason. I, I, I can't fathom why changing your search engine would be an advanced setting, to be honest. Um, but then you have to go all the way down here. And once again, I have to wonder how many average users are going to be able to find that. So because Edge is a Microsoft product, they've integrated it with Cortana as well, which if you don't already know, in the bottom left hand corner of Windows 10 is kind of that search bar, but the component of it where when you say, hey Cortana, it responds to you and you can ask it a question, you can ask it to set reminders and that kind of thing. Um, now, not everybody has Cortana enabled, but if Cortana is a feature that you like to use, you can uh, right-click on Elements and find out more information about it by using Cortana. So we go right-click, ask Cortana, 
goes ahead, searches Bing about that, and returns us with some information. And I'm sure that there's other ways you can use Cortana in the Edge browser as well. So then in the top right hand corner we have the hub, which in my opinion is pretty well organized. It's got a few different sections that you're going to want to go through here. Favorites, which are basically bookmarks, you can put them on the bar there if you want. Uh, article reading lists, uh, books that you may have purchased from the Windows Store. Uh, you can see current and past downloads, and you can see a browsing history all in one area. And I think having those five tabs kind of condensed here is going to be kind of easy to navigate. So one tool that the Edge browser has that you don't really see in other browsers so much is the ability to make a web note out of the box. So this integrates with um, OneNote, which is out of the Microsoft Office package, but you get in Windows 10 for free even if you don't have Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and all those other programs. And what this basically allows you to do in the Edge browser is to take a screenshot of a web page and draw all kinds of notes over it. So you can scribble in some text if you want, you can highlight something, kind of whatever you want to go uh, have going on there. And looks like you can add some text bubbles if that's your kind of thing. And the idea here is you just save a note for later. So I'm going to save this in Quick Notes, and we can view it in one note um, as a separate application. So we'll see this pop up here, and OneNote does synchronize these notes across your account. So if you open it later on another device, uh, that's gonna work out just fine because you'll be able to see it there too. If you ever wanna show what's happening on your browser on a different device, such as a projector, and you have a connection that's Miracast uh, compatible, then you can go over to the settings menu and do cast media to device over here. Of course, uh, the device has to Port Miracast, so keep that in mind. Not all devices are going to work out of the box with this. Now that said, um, you can also just Miracast your entire desktop um, because the Connect application is not specific to the Edge browser, but it just has the ability to have that integrated connection there. And one thing I always like to see in a browser is that the Edge browser has both a light theme and a dark theme. As you can see, I usually prefer to go with the dark theme. Uh, I think it's easier on my eyes. And yes, as soon as I switch back to the light theme, it gets painful, so I'm gonna keep it at dark. One last downside is that if you are importing info from another browser and your browser happens to be Opera, you don't have a clear, um, basically out of the box way of doing that. So you might need to export to a different file or install an extension in order to actually get your your opera information over and even if you're doing firefox it doesn't synchronize the saved passwords or the browsing history only if you are coming from chrome or internet explorer though i'm not even sure why you have internet explorer installed on a windows 10 machine so really it's kind of chrome or firefox but just for the bookmarks oh and you know what i completely forgot about the performance benchmarks so in my tests, which you can run at basemark.com, uh, web.basemark.com, I noticed that the Edge browser was scoring considerably lower than the Opera browser and the Chrome browser uh, in terms of speed. So if we go over here to my second test from a couple days ago, we can see that it has a very low score in the graphics suite and pretty bad for generic suite as well. Though it's worth mentioning that the conformance um, in terms of CSS capabilities and HTML5 capabilities was actually pretty high. I think this is really comparable to the scores I was getting for Chrome. Um, so not bad there, just kind of weak in the performance department. And I ran this one today, uh, kind of getting similar in terms of the score, this overall score way lower. Um, I think Chrome and Opera were somewhere in the 400s or 500s and uh, still showing that the conformance was actually pretty decent. So overall, I think that the Edge browser is decent. It has some nice things going for it, like integration with OneNote, being able to screencast, put your tabs aside, and having a dark theme. But the amount of pushing it does on the Bing browser and MSN on your front page, needing to go into the settings menu or even the advanced settings menu in order to change those aspects like the default search engine, to me is really unacceptable. If it were up to me, I would have the initial browser launch give you a couple options out of default, like just asking you, do you want the MSN there? 
which search engine do you want to use by default and then going from there and setting it up for you rather than making you have to dig into those menus and customize it yourself. But it's totally understandable why they would want to do this, why they want to use the Bing browser out of the box since of course it's affiliated in the same company. So I suppose you can't blame them for wanting to do that. Now, when it comes to the performance issues, yes, the Edge browser was scoring less, and that does have a little bit of an impact on things. But I think that the average user, as long as you have a decent computer, isn't really going to notice those small performance differences on a day-to-day -day basis. So for the average user, the Edge browser is going to do just fine. But that said, I don't see much reason why not to switch to another browser like Chrome or Opera. So once again, in conclusion, Edge is a decent browser, but I don't think it's currently leading the pack at the moment. But if that's what you've got out of the box and you haven't installed anything yet, um, you're probably not going to be hurting too much by using the Edge browser. So that's going to be it for this video, my review of the Edge browser 2017. Thanks for watching. I've been Chris, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future tech content.